Profile scribing and panel moulding cutters for the router are now widely available, making it quick and easy to produce traditional framed and panel doors to a professional standard. You'll need a powerful half inch capacity router with variable speed, a router table and the cutters. This door uses a standard cutter set consisting of a profile and scribe cutter and the panel raising cutter. Both the required edge profiles are produced with the single cutter by raising or lowering it in the table to use either the top or the bottom half. The profile scribing cutter is made up from several components, all of which are held on a precision arbor. As you assemble the cutter, make sure that the individual knives are positioned at 90 degrees to each other on the arbor. This minimizes vibration and produces a more even cut. It's essential that your router has a fine height adjuster so you can match the profile and scribe cuts perfectly. Make sure the cutter is inserted into the collet up to the K-line to resist the high rotational forces involved and always reduce the speed for very big cutters. The maximum speed is usually clearly marked on the cutter. The timber needs to be accurately thicknessed as the joints will never fit properly if there is even the slightest variation in size. As the setting up procedure is very much trial and error, always prepare a couple of spare pieces for test cuts. The machining process must be carried out with a router mounted in a table. It's not safe to use it handheld. Also, connect a suitable extractor to minimise the dust produced as you work. Start with a scribe joint on the rail ends, and for accuracy and safety, it's better to make up a jig for these rails. This also minimises end spelching as the cutter breaks through. The jig is just a 6mm MDF board with a piece of 50 by 25mm to act as a stop. A lever clamp ensures the work can't move as it's being machined. Make sure that the fences of the table are in line with the bearing on the cutter using a steel rule to line it all through. And then for maximum support, close them up to within 2mm of the cutter. Set the height of the cutter to leave a minimum quirk on the moulding of at least 1.5mm. If it's less than this, the edge will be weak or will be lost when the job is sanded or painted. Clamp the rail to the guide jig face side up, making sure that both of them are tight up against the fence. Then, slowly push the whole assembly through the cutter in a smooth action that is not too slow or the cutter will burn the timber. Keep the edge of the jig in contact with the fence all the way through and cut right into the end of the stop to minimise any breakout. The resulting joint should be really clean. Repeat the procedure on the end of all the rails, keeping them orientated correctly, face side up for all the cuts. Now adjust the cutter set for the matching edge profile and use the scribed rail end as a guide to setting the height. Make a trial cut in a piece of spare material and check for fit. All these edges now have to be machined with the face side down. Run the mould down the edges of each of the stars on the rails, making sure they're held firmly on the table or the groove will end up out of line with the edge. The rail and stars should then fit together perfectly with a neat mitered corner moulding. The panel is next and if you're using solid wood, make some allowance for it to move with changes in humidity. So allow a 2mm gap at either side and 1mm at either end. The panel raising cutter is a large diameter, so revolve the cutter by hand before you switch on just to make sure that there really is enough clearance and check that the router speed is set correctly. Start cutting the panel profile by making a shallow pass across the two ends of the panel and then down the sides to remove any breakout. Keep increasing the depth of cut until the lip formed on the edge of the panel is a nice sliding fit in the grooves on the frame and that the panel will not stop the scribe joints from closing up. If everything is okay, glue the frame joints and clamp the whole thing together making sure it's square. You don't normally put any glue on the panel edges but leave it loose to allow for any movement. Once it's dry, a light sanding will flush off the joints and remove any glue smears. Now all you need is a coat of polish and your panel door is complete.